I don't know how to describe it other than like like a demon type of sound. But it's silhouetted, hulking, every bit of five and a half feet wide, 13 to 14 foot tall, pitch black. The one thing that ran through my mind when I had this encounter was I don't have a big enough gun. Your host, two-time witness and field researcher for more than 40 years, William Jevnik. Welcome to Creek Devil. Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Creek Devil. Joe in East Texas is joining us today. Uh, Tom, I'm going to give you the microphone first, and then I'll make a couple of announcements after that. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Hey, I just want to say hello to everybody. There's been uh, got a lot of emails from folks and some questions. Hey, where's Tom? Well, I'll tell you where Tom's been. Will is a taskmaster. He's got me running out to Kathmandu, out to Afghanistan, all across the country, flying around, <laughs> and uh, works me. You guys have no idea. But actually, the truth of the matter is a little bit of a health update. I uh, got diagnosed with uh, cancer. Well, a lot of people get it, so... But the bad news, the real bad news with that is my doctor said, unfortunately, it's treatable. We're going to keep you around for years, if not decades. So Will's not getting rid of you that easy. Tom, we're really <laughs> sorry to hear that, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It. I knew it. Um, but anyway, the show's about you folks. And I know, statistically speaking, with the number of people that we have out there, you guys are dealing everybody out there has stuff that they're dealing with so our objective is to entertain you and give you stories and in a factual manner so that said i think uh i think we're good to go here well we're certainly glad that you got got that good news tom and uh, a couple other things on our plate people ask occasionally about brian brian will be coming back with his own segment and I'm not going to say anything about that until he's ready to announce it, but he's working on it currently. And, of course, everyone's heard Milo back with us. Milo had uh, he had cataract surgery in both eyes, and I didn't realize the extent of how bad it was. He said he was having difficulty even getting around inside of his own house. So his vision was bad, and I think he was kind of uh, feeling kind of bummed out about that. So he wasn't really participating with much of anything. So Milo's vision is back to 2025 he's doing really good that's what it was when we were 18 when we went in the service AFES, you know they did the physical and they said his vision was 2025 so that's good you know you good to hear milo back and he's you know high spirits and his clowning around and stuff so uh our reader jeff is still working on the mr black transcripts reading those i gave him quite a bit i gave him about a third of the uh, transcriptions and, uh, you know, working on his Ph.D. and everything, he's, you know, his time is limited, but he's working on it. So, having said that, Joe, glad you're with us, man. What's going on in East Texas? Yeah, well, man, glad to be, glad to be back on the show. It's been a little bit. And, Tom, I'm, I'm glad to, to hear that you're going to survive this. And uh, anything I can do for you, man, you let me know. But, uh, yeah, uh, down here in Texas, man, you know, well, a long time ago, in another lifetime ago, I used to keep maps and notes and logs of all the encounters that people would tell me about. And, uh, you know, you go through stuff in life and, you know, all that stuff got lost. And so here recently, I started uh, keeping notes and keeping tracks of all that stuff and, you know, marking it on my maps. Uh, so I, I, I kind of found like a little pattern with recent activity anyway. Um, from uh, uh, for anyone who's familiar with Texas, there's a place called Tyler, Nacogdoches, Zavala, and Saratoga. These seem to be seem to be four of the hot spots in East Texas, and they also run along, I guess, what you could call the Big Thicket. Not necessarily all of these little towns are in the Big Thicket, but they are definitely within walking distance for anyone, you know, even a human being for that matter. And they're not very far apart. I mean, maybe a couple of hours drive between each one, you know, at the most. Some of these probably get there in, in an hour. Um, but I just really found that kind of kind of interesting. Uh, and then I found the same thing for uh, kind of like in, I guess, set, Central Texas, where like Austin and San Antonio that. 
uh, between West San Antonio and West Austin, there's activity along that little route or corridor, if you want to call it that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then also on the east side from Austin down to San Antonio and even down as far as what's called uh, Beeville, which is kind of a little bit south in South Texas. So I just kind of found that kind of strange that there's these corridors of activity. And I just wanted to get you guys' opinion before I elaborate a little bit more on that on what you guys think about that. You know, I remember makes me think about something that Renee DeHinden told me a long time ago. And this was back before <clears throat> a lot of these patterns were disrupted. He said the Sasquatches weren't distributed evenly. They were in pockets or corridors. He said, we know where they are. But, <clears throat> of course, after that, you know, with logging and all kinds of changes in different regions, all those patterns were disrupted. But I think since, you know, logging isn't prominent like it once was, uh, and, and I don't know what goes on in that part of Texas, but um, you do see established patterns if you look for them. Yeah, and I, I think you're right. So, like, in, in those particular areas um, that I've talked about, the west side and east side of San Antonio, and then the corridor along uh, the big thicket, there's not a lot of growth there. It, it, it seemed to have either have, like, stopped for whatever reason, you know, the growth, or uh, it's moved on somewhere else and I just find that kind of interesting, you know. You mean like where people are moving in and things like that, industry or right, whatever? Exactly. exactly. I, I think maybe the expansion has stopped there, you know. Well, and, uh, Forrest, I guess that kind of dovetails with your daughter's recent experience. And I don't know how close that is to the area Joe's talking about, but it, it is in East Texas, right? Oh, yes. Well, he, he'll uh, if he's been all over East Texas, he'll know exactly where she lives. She lives in a little town called Tenaha. And uh, that's just uh, due south of Carthage. And uh, they've had, uh, uh, it's in Shelby County, which connects to Panola County. And um, so they've got, uh, they've had lots of sightings. And like I said, they've even had them reported to the the sheriff's department there and uh, people seeing them. So um, my daughter, what was it, two weeks ago, Will? Uh, yeah, about that. Yeah, about it was about that. And uh, uh, it was on a Saturday. I remember that because she had just uh, taken her husband to the air, airport and come back. And she'd seen some, uh, she thought the cows, the, the calves were running around. So she thought maybe the, that, uh, you know, the neighbor's dogs were over there chasing the uh, calves or something. And so she walked out the pasture and um, they had been noticing uh, and her husband had remarked about the fact that they'd been finding uh, catfish and bass um, uh, skeletal uh, remains up on the bank of their, uh, they have a real big pond. And he had actually stocked uh, bass and catfish in this pond. So, I mean, they've got some pretty large fish in there. And um, so he wasn't real happy when he was finding and he was actually blaming his own dogs. He thought, and I kept telling Michelle, I said, dogs don't go out. They're not going to go out in this pond to uh, go fishing. And, um, and then they found turtle shells, big turtles that had been split open. And I said, dogs aren't doing that either. And uh, because there weren't any teeth marks or anything like that on the, the turtle shells. And so she goes out there to see, check on these uh, calves that were running around and uh, um, turned out it wasn't really anything. They were just playing. So, um, but as she's walking across the, the, uh, the raised upper portion above the pond there, she looks down and it was kind of funny because Tom, if you remember this, I mean, uh, I was talking to you and uh, Tom and I were having a conversation uh, about cats, about cats as usual, and uh, um, all of a sudden Michelle calls me, and I thought, well, that you know, I'll just call her back later. It's no big deal. I'll call her back later, and um, so then about twenty went twenty minutes passes, and she calls again, and that's when I told Tom, I said, uh, you you need to hold on a second because if she calls me back <clears throat> multiple times like that, she needs to talk to me. So uh, I. I called her and Tom was holding and then she starts telling me this. And that's when I actually looked over on her, 
her text and she had made a comment. Of course, she's the, the comedian in the family. And she she's like, Mom, I, I always thought you were kind of crazy about the, uh, you know. And then she goes, well, I know you're crazy, Mom, but I love you. And uh, but but about the Bigfoot stuff, I thought you were crazy. And um, so and then she goes in big, bold print. Is this Bigfoot? And so and and then she sends me all these pictures and I was like, oh, my gosh. I said, Michelle, hold on. Uh, let, let me, let's put Tom on the phone. Let's put Tom on the phone. And that's when she talked to Tom too, and told him what she found. And, um, and she had the, the actual foresight to take her foot out of her a boot and then put it up alongside the, the prints. And then later she went and actually went back up to the house and got a tape measure and then, uh, measured the, the footprints. The only thing she forgot to do and, uh, was, um, the, to mark the distance between the strides, but she said they were about uh, three feet across, but uh, from, you know, foot to foot on the strides. So, um, but I think, and that's when Tom also, while we were talking, you know, he called, he, uh, we, we called you, Will, and then got you in on the conversation. We all chatted for about half an hour there. So, um, so anyway, her head's on a swivel now. So, um, and they're putting up game cameras, but they're mounting them way up in the trees. So, because I told her, I said, well, you can't put them down low because they can see the 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 IR lights on them. So uh, she said, no, uh, they're they're going to put them up in the trees and then pull them down. So, um, <clears throat> so I think that'll probably be a smart move. But yeah, um, and I, you know, well, I, I think I told so. you, Tom, one time when I we were talking, I thought I heard a, or maybe it was Chuck. I don't remember now who I was talking to that night, but I heard a whoop out there. It was me. And, and, and I, and I heard, and I actually went out cause her dogs were barking and, um, I thought, okay, <laughs> I just heard a whoop when I came out, <laughs> out the door. And I thought that they had been, they had gone to, uh, to Tyler to, to, uh, take the kids to do something and they were coming back. So I thought maybe the dogs were barking cause they had, uh, were driving in and it wasn't the case. They weren't even there. And then, you know, as I'm walking out the door, I hear this whoop and I was like, okay, I'm going back in the house because where she lives, as I showed you guys, it's a, it's off of a, a county road and it's, it's, it's a gravel road. And I mean, and, and if you remember when she was talking to y'all that within what, since she had gotten home, which I guess had been a, a couple of hours, they'd only had three vehicles go down that road. And, uh, you know, when I was recuperating out there, you never saw any traffic out there. Not, uh, not any. So anyway, well, for us, you, you recall, and Will, um, it brought up another discussion and, and with Chuck as well. And that is recent changes in activity where we're seeing a lot more activity that is out of the norm. And, um, you know, I mean, this was just comes out of blue. We're seeing uh, more reports and they're coming in. I don't know. What are you, Will, Forrest, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think I told you what I, I think. And of course, it's totally a supposition on my part. But <clears throat> knowing apes and primates, and I mean, I know there's a lot of people I always have to sidebar this because uh there's a lot of people that say no they're a human species well you know all that remains to be uh you know discovered we we don't know whether they're actual just apes bipedal apes or whether they might be some kind of a break off and an archaic uh uh form of uh human out there we don't know we don't know none of us do and um so what i suppose is happening and again, this is strictly my theory, is that you've got, you know, when you have a change in alphas, and, and I'm assuming, too, that their uh, lifespans are very similar to humans. They may be longer. They may be shorter. I don't know. Um, but when those, those males that have run these groups for so long that had fear of humans and respect for humans, and they kept, tried to keep their groups out of harm's way, basically. Uh, not all, all of them did it. We understand that. There, there were problems with some of them, but the majority of them really had wanted nothing to do with humans. They knew humans represented something that wasn't good. So um, 
I think those guys have cycled through, and what we have now are younger males that have taken over that have been so accustomed to being around humans, seeing humans, and even coming on humans' property. I think that the fear of humans has really abated, and they're out there just doing what they damn well please, and uh, um, Katie bar the door, we're going to do it, and whether the humans like it or not. So I think a lot of that fear has just completely disappeared. Yeah, I now, think you're like right. Say, that's my opinion. <laughs> I, I think you're right, though. That's, you know, we've got, um, if you look at human behavior, it, it was brought on by our behavioral changes because we, you know, we've mentioned this time and again that we don't go out and do the things we used to do. So, right. You know, animals, wildlife are going to fill in that that gap. You know, the, where they talk about nature abhors a vacuum. So when one species changes behaviors, it created that vacuum, and now all the wildlife are going to fill that in. So they're going to start encroaching, and we're seeing it with all kinds of different species, and the Sasquatch is no exception. What do you guys think? Well, during the pandemic, what I mean, you had people that were sending pictures about seeing deer wandering down the main streets of towns and, and bears and uh, cougars, and they're all looking in the windows like, what happened to the humans, you know? I, I'll I mean, tell you, I, animals are smart enough to recognize that. I, I, see it, I saw it on my job just the uh, day before yesterday. You know, I was going down our main road, um, heading out to where the, the highway is, and we see coyotes and things around work once in a while, but usually they steer clear of the, the equipment. And this one came out probably 10 feet behind a machine that I was operating. And like it didn't care, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, stood there, looked around, and wandered off into the field. And uh, it's just behaviors that you didn't see before. Hey, you know, it's funny you mentioned the, the coyotes. We, there was actually reports of coyotes in downtown Houston. You know, uh, what the hell brought them to the city? It, it's, it's so like we're one of the biggest cities in, uh, in in terms of population, but I think we're actually either one or two in terms of how wide we are. You know, how much space we actually take up. So for coy you know, coyote to come downtown, I think any other animal can go wherever they want to go. You know. Yeah, because they like Forrester they saying they've kind of lost that fear of humans. And what, yeah, what are they doing? Are they wandering around going through trash cans? Or are they, you know, picking on other people's, you know, we hear the stories where, you know, people lose their pets from coyote attacks. Um, what are these things doing? You know, I think they're, they probably are just, just uh, wandering around. And uh, so many people now work from home. Uh, you know, used to, you could go downtown in the middle of the week and, you know, it was like so packed, you know, all the streets are so packed. But you can go down there now, you know, on a Tuesday or Wednesday, and it's like going up there on a the weekend. There's no one there hardly. So I just think they just make their way in. It's just easier for them to get around. I think the fact that so many people work at home now, there's just less people, you know, out and in the I, streets, out, out and about. And I think, like with Forrest, your daughter, I think the tracks on her inner yard there, that was an example of what we're talking about. Yeah. I mean, I know that, you know, I know she was, uh, bless her heart, she was teasing me about the, uh, being crazy. Though she doesn't really seriously think that I am. But, uh, um, you know, I think she kind of thought the, the Bigfoot thing was just a bit of a silliness on my part. But uh, now she's not thinking that anymore either. So uh, my first comment to her was, uh, you know, you need to keep a tighter uh, watch on the two little ones because, uh, um <clears throat> I do know that they they have a reputation, and uh, I don't want to I don't want to be the one to find out that uh, they do really do that, you know, snatch children and such. So um, I just assume not find that one out. Of course, we have to watch out for big cats and things like that too. Well, we ha we have them around here. I mean, you know, I've told you I picked up a mountain lion on. Uh, my game camera but you know with the horses and and the cats and everything running i've never had her bother anything i mean she's she's uh meandered into the uh uh because i saw her tracks and everything in the in the uh barn so she but she's never ever offered to try to kill anything so um you know i think 
I think we've got so much white, so many white-tailed deer around here that uh, um, they're perfectly satisfied taking, you know, taking deer and not bothering with, uh, you know. I think animals are smart enough to know that they start preying on humans, pets, and and humans, livestock. That they're they have stepped across that line that uh, will start causing them problems. So I think most animals are smart enough to know that uh, you know, let's, let's not go there. Well, up, to, up till recent times, I'd agree with that. But look at how people are behaving now. It's almost to the point where, you know, we allow ourselves to be in Jeopardy's way without reacting like we normally would have in the past. And I think it's emboldening wildlife to do what they're doing. Well, I, I, probably, I probably tend to agree with you there because people aren't hunting like they used to. And, um, you know, and I don't I don't know why, but uh, uh, people just aren't going out there and hunting like well, they used to. And it goes so. beyond that, though. Even people that are just out for casual recreation, whether they're on hiking trails or bicycling or whatever, you know, and you see these things more often now where they're being chased by some wild animal, and instead of stopping and, you know, standing their ground and, you know, fighting back, because we're, we're a big creature, you know, so most things out there would definitely stay away from us because of our size and posture alone, because upright posture is an aggressive stance mm -hmm. in nature, and uh, instead they're running, and so these animals are chasing them. Mm -hmm. So they're, well, they're starting... Well, that's a cat's natural instinct. If something's running, then they're going to they're gonna chase you. But, but not, you know, just, I, not just I think... a cat, but bear and all kinds of things. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, and y'all, y'all remember I've told you the story about the time when uh, I was uh, bringing up the cow's tail coming out of a, a, a site that we had been working on, and you know, to go back for lunch, and I was confronted with a, a mountain lion right in the middle of the the trail, and it had been cool enough. I had grabbed my jacket and put it back on, and uh, all I did was I just grabbed the edges of the jacket and I, I looked it made it look like I had wings, you know, out the side made myself look big, you know. But you know, I think a lot of it goes back to the 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 fact that we had been we had been warned ahead of time that they were in that area and this was what we needed to do. We needed to stand up to them, not run. And and you know what? That cat took one look at me and it went like, that's weird looking, I'm leaving, mm -hmm. you know, and it did. It just turned around and walked off. But I think that the young young people today, I don't think. Oh God, and I'm going to get somebody mad about this. Um, they, <laughs> You're they probably going to say what I'm the, thinking. They they don't have the knowledge and the the backbone to do these things. Um, they're training the I aggressive mean, nature they, they out of us. Well, they're just not in. They're not informed by their their parents, and and I don't know whether it's a lack of knowledge on the part of the parents or. Just, I mean, I don't know, because I had grandparents and parents that taught me these things. I, and I, and I, I think that a lot of these kids just don't have that anymore. I, I, think, I think what they're doing is they're engineering, you know, people's attitudes and thoughts to the point where they're trying to engineer. Because you hear this term, like, what's the term, to toxic max masculinity? Um, oh, yeah. So, you know, they're trying to take out of us what's our normal nature. And, you know, in some circumstances, maybe that's a good thing. In others, it's not. So, Do you want me to go on my, my John Wayne tirade about the, the, uh, we're, they're always finding, seeking the feminine side of men? Well, you know, <laughs> I, I, I think most women, personally, guys, uh, want that John Wayne back in their life. Because, you know, I don't feminine. need a feminine guy. <laughs> There's Milo. Oh, my God. Glad well, you joined us, Milo. Out, we, we should have some comments about <laughs> that from Milo. Oh, no. Hey, well, Joe. We're, we're, yeah, we're talking to hey, Joe, Joe in Texas, Milo, about uh, we're getting, you know, an update from what's going on there. Okay. Oh, Joe, I'm in Burnett, Texas. Okay. Yeah, you know, you were talking about your daughter. She's in Shelby County. That's right next to Nacogdoches County, where right where yeah, yeah, part of that is. corridor uh -huh. is at. So that's yeah. a very good possibility that they're. I mean, it's it's a neighboring county. You know, they border each other. So yeah. Yeah. Well, they hey, they first. had a they actually had a sighting uh, at the a lake, uh, probably not uh, three or four miles from her house. Um, oh, here, wow. just uh, a little. Oh, it wasn't a few months back. <clears throat> 
Well, I think Horace, you and thing... I talked about. Oh, go ahead, Joe. Sorry, I'm jumping in. No, this is Chuck. Uh, I uh, Chuck. Uh, I think another thing that that that's happening too is I think their numbers are increasing, and um, I I think that's we're going to see more and more sightings. People are going to start seeing more and more sightings uh, than than what they have in the past. I think you're right, Chuck. And Forrest, you brought up a good point when we were we were looking at some tracks recently from uh, Central Texas, and the fact that was the larger track. There were there were a couple different sizes at least in those lines of tracks, and you brought up a good point that it was probably an older juvenile taking care of a younger juvenile. So the adults weren't there, and those those younger ones aren't going to have the same fears and perceptions of humans and human areas that the older ones might. No. Oh, oh that's, that's entirely correct. And I mean, you see this in primates because uh, they usually, the adults will usually let the, uh, and I'm not talking about the ones that are still clinging to mom nursing all the time, but I'm talking about the, the, uh, you know, the babies that are three or four months old and uh, even older uh, that they will let the, the yearlings and the two-year-olds uh, watch them. And um, they they tend to sometimes get themselves into trouble because they you see them in the, the videos of the ones that, like the, the macaques around the, the temples and such. The babies will come right up to the, to the humans to get uh, food from them. And, and this creates problems even for the babies because and in those situations, then adults see the, the babies being fed. And, the, you know, babies are supposed to only eat what mama drops on the ground and uh, what they can find. And if they see one eating out of, uh, you know, the, the proper hierarchical cycle, then they get in trouble. And sometimes they even get killed over it. Now, I don't necessarily see that in Bigfoot, but uh, it could possibly happen. But, you know, kids tend to get into trouble when they're not supervised. And, so they're, they're and learning. It, yeah, they're learning yeah. things that they normally would not have. Exactly. Yeah. And let's face it, teenagers aren't the best teachers sometimes. And I don't it, care what you are. And it used, to be, <laughs> it used to be signs of juveniles were a rarity up until the last two or three years. Now we're seeing lots of them. Which is number one? It's a it's a clue, a strong clue that population growth is increasing dramatically. And secondly, it's behavioral changes. I well, I want to hear some of those wild stories that Joe has from East Texas. Oh yeah, that's that's an exciting area. Yeah, yeah I don't Joe, know I'm planning on moving to East Texas. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, when you come down this way, you know, that's we'll get together. I'll take you to a couple of good spots, you know, down here. Yeah, so, you know, we talked about the corridor that's on the east side of San Antonio and Austin. It goes pretty far south, all the way down to, to Beeville. Uh, me and Walter had actually made a trip down there to go see those uh, some people who have them on their property. And they were telling us some, some crazy stuff. Man, I hope I haven't told you this stuff before, but um, they, were, they were telling us that they have a boatload of uh, game cams out, you know. And they would go out and they would find the, the lenses poked out. You know, the camelines, like something poked them out. Um, you know, bones scattered throughout the property. Uh, of course, they saw silhouettes and eye shine at night. They've got a gazebo in the back. Uh, the sun came out one day and saw, you know, something big and dark run off of the gazebo. Um, what did they find? Oh, uh, hey, you Joe, know, what kind of time frame was this? How long ago uh, this was this? Uh, it's still going on to this day. It still goes on. Uh, me and Walter went out there. Really? And, yeah. Uh, I can't remember. Early in the year of 2022 or like maybe the spring. Yeah. It had to be right around that time. They're actually poking the lenses out of it. It shows intelligence that they know it's a big eyeball or something they don't like. Yeah. <laughs> right. And anytime they would go out and, and hunt and, you know, they had a place where they leave their gut pile. Uh, they go out the next day and they're just clean, you know, uh, they gut piles just taken nothing dragged off nothing you know scattered about it's just it's gone um they do have coyotes out there but it's not like a big issue for them or or a big problem that they have you know um, i don't see coyotes go. poking lenses out though right right <laughs> yeah uh or you know like i said we we found uh we actually found you know bones out there you know leg bones out there 
Uh, it, it's a spooky place, definitely. And I think I told you about that. Well, we we stopped in, uh, and and we parked. We're sitting there for a minute, and we feel his truck move. Uh, Walter's truck like lurched forward. It just like up and pushed it. And we kind of looked at each other. We stood there. We're watching, and then we felt it again. And you could hear like boom. You could hear those little boom when it hit, and it would get pushed. Yeah. And uh, it was in the, it was in the daytime, but we were parked in some deep dark brush, and. Uh, and that was that, that was definitely a weird situation. And I mean, you can hear the 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 little, I guess you call it the impact, the the little thud where he hit the truck and pushed the truck. And the, the whole truck kind of, you know, he had his parking brakes on, whatever it was in park, and it just kind of lurched forward and rocked a little bit. Oh, so it actually there. rocked the truck. Yeah. Did you guys well, see yeah. anything or hear anything? No, we didn't. We didn't. We didn't see anything. We didn't hear anything. Uh, but the guys out there on, on the property, the owners, they said that stuff happens all the time. If they're not paying attention, that they'll feel the trucks get rocked and moved around. Uh, you know, they hear the footsteps and the running, uh, get the, the nasty smells. They, they've never taken a shot at one just because, you know, they've heard throughout the years, don't do that. Excuse me. What's and, uh, the... Um... What's the brush like? What's the um, it's very, foliage? It's very, very thick. It's uh, it's not very wooded, but it's very thick. Lots of thorns. You're not going to walk through this thing and not come out. All right, now you're that? talking to a guy from the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. When you say thorns, I'm wondering, are we talking? I've like heard thicket? this skeet can be pretty. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, Chuck, uh, you get the same thing, don't you? You get a lot of that mesquite out there and. Oklahoma? No, not not really here in Oklahoma that much. Where I'm at, um, further south toward Texas, you, you get a lot of mesquite. Yeah, and yeah, as a matter of fact, these, 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 yeah, these thorns are, are long as hell. I mean, they're long as hell. I had friends that go out in this kind of uh, terrain. They go hunting, and they'll buy special tires for this and still get flats, you know? So it, these, these thorns are no joke. We, I mean, we we got poked about twenty times, and it and it just this it's not fun, man. Yeah, you you'll lose your man card real quick out there. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're ready to turn back around and come home. It's a uh, it's it's no fun. But uh, so yeah, it, it, Joe, it, I got, it's Joe. Oh, I got yeah. a I got a question for you. Um, so the area that you're talking about, it's it's not like the big thicket. No, no, I, it it it's it's got a lot of trees, but it's not like like I would call like dense, like heavily dense. I mean, you know, it, the the density is very sparse. You know, there's okay. it's few and far between, and uh, so I, I definitely wouldn't call it very very dense. And for that matter, I mean, maybe the brush is I don't know, ten, twelve feet high. You know, uh, it's definitely you're not going to see over it. Uh, even sitting, in, even riding in the back of someone's truck, it's, it's still hard to see over it. it, it it's just so thick with a brush. Well, and you don't have the high canopy like you do in East Texas either. You've got big pine trees and, and such as that. And in right. my area in the south, you've got, you know, we, we do have big oak trees, but uh, uh, those are pretty much in certain areas. But now, down in Beeville, they still have juniper trees, cedar trees, and stuff like that, too, don't they? And there's actually a lot of water down there, not just from the cattle ranchers, but there's also a, a big lake. He told me how big it was, but it, yeah, it, it's huge. It's something like, you know, like 40-acre lake or something like that. It, it's a huge lake, but there's definitely plenty of water down there, too. It's not on his property, but down there. And, uh, you know, we got to talking about that, that little corridor. Well, I don't know if you remember me telling you a couple of years back about a guy who went hunting in a place called Zavala, and he found like a bunch of bones in a well. Um, yeah, I remember that, Joe. Anything yeah. new on that? or? Well, uh, I, I talked to a guy a few months ago, and he was telling me, he goes, yeah, he goes, we used to go hunting on this one property. He goes, and we would always find like coyotes with their heads ripped off, you know? And... Um, he said they would tell the owners of the, of the lease, hey, we, we keep finding these coyotes, you know, they're decapitated, something's snapping their heads off. And he said the owners were kind of like, ah, yeah, it just happens from time to time. Uh, you know, we don't know if it's poachers or whatever, you know, killing coyotes. You not know. to worry about it. But I just thought it was it was weird that he told me that. 
And I asked him, I said, where was this happening at? And he told me it happened in Zavala. Said, Holy cow, that's, 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 that's strange. And it's something, well, you know, that happened like within the last year. You know, that so, makes me think of two um, things. Oh, hold on, sorry, 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 Tom. That made me think of yeah. two things. First, the state trooper I talked to many years ago that found the dead coyotes, and, the, and he was following Sasquatch tracks, so he knew the creatures were doing that to the coyotes. And the second thing was in that same area where Walter found the, the wild hog with its head torn off. Right. Right, God. yeah. Well, and, and and like I said, now, when you say torn off, you, it's literally gone, right? It's not like snap neck and yeah, Joe. You want yeah. to tell him about it, that? Yeah, yeah. The head was 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 torn off this this hog. It was and the hog was then the head was nowhere about. There were no bullet holes in in the hog. There were no stab wounds in the hog, um, but there was like a patch of fur like on the back of it, like between the shoulders area. It looked like a. If you look at this picture, it looks like a big hand grabbed it. Like you know how you would grab a, a puppy or a kitten. Yeah. From neck. That's how it looked like it was grabbed. I mean, I, that's my speculation, but you can see like the hair trauma that was like pulled or whatever wow. uh, on the back of that hog. If you look at that picture, you know, and it, so I'm thinking he'd snap him by his by the nape and ripped his head off and left him laying right there. But uh, well, yeah, see, that's like a I question I had. The um, the tensile strength, you know, the the uh, to dismember something like that without the use of tools. It's going to take a tremendous amount of force, even on a coyote. Right, yeah. Yeah, uh, you know. Yeah, you, you, we're not strong enough to do that. I mean, we would have to twist and twist and twist all day. You know, I've killed hogs, and, uh, you know, we've snapped the heads off. And that's – after we snap the heads off, that's after cutting all the tissue around its neck and then twisting the head and popping it off, you know. Yeah, so, just, yeah, just to okay. grab it without doing anything. It's just – because you think how thick that neck is. It's almost like they don't have one. Well, yeah, muscle. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah. I, I forgot about that story about the deputy and the, and the coyotes. That's it. That's interesting. That's uh, I, I, yeah. I, I got to get back with that guy and see if he's if he's going back there hunting. He said that. Other than that, nothing ever happened. You know, he never saw anything or heard anything weird. Uh, he may have heard some howls if I if I recall correctly, but he couldn't be sure. Um. But they definitely find the the coyotes with their heads ripped off. Hey Chuck, you same. Chuck, you were going to update us on something too. Yeah, uh, I found I, uh, I there's a guy who is a researcher and he's in uh, southeast Oklahoma, and uh, he just wrote a book, and uh, the name of the book is called The Shampy. Uh, horror has a name and um, I'll, I'll give you the description of the book uh, it says on here get my glasses on I'll read you the description it's pretty short I don't know what I do with my glasses that's funny I okay. don't know what I do without mine <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm the same way. Um, this is I don't in need the them anymore. <laughs> in the mountainous interior of the o Ochita National Forest, which is in southeast Oklahoma, it says an ancient terror has been disturbed. A monster of native legend has emerged and it has a taste for human flesh. Now, I... I I've never talked to this guy, uh, but I do have, he's, he wrote another book uh, earlier, and this is a new book that he's just wrote. And um, I'd like to get a hold of this guy and talk to him and uh, probably get the book too. But um, it's pretty interesting because we <clears throat> we have all discussed that some of the stuff does happen. And uh, if he's got some eyewitness reports or something of that nature, um, that's probably somebody we need to talk to. Yeah, absolutely. You know, <clears throat> I had put out, <clears throat> excuse me, put out some information a little while ago. We were looking for um, 
family members willing to talk with us privately who've had a family member disappear under strange circumstances. And I received an email just uh, a day or two ago from a gentleman in Wyoming and a good friend of his vanished in July. And when you look at the, the story and everything, it's, it comes up and they, they say, they call it an accident. Well, the particulars of the case do not point to accident because what they found was uh, apparently this person's foot, um, just the foot inside a shoe. Now, I don't know about you guys, but does that sound like an accident to me? And it also parallels to the, the cases decades old up, <laughs> up in the uh, northwestern corner of Washington State along the Canadian border where they find frequently human feet in shoes. You know, I, I just watched an episode of Bones, and they had that. Yeah, I'm sure they they picked up TV shows, pick up on those something unusual like that. But that um, is totally bizarre. I, I got, I'm going to talk to this individual and see if he can give me more details, because when you look at these reports, and Tom, it goes back to, you know, the information we knew about that professor that <clears throat> disappeared next to the trail. And then, yep. you know, the search yep. and rescue didn't find him for a whole year. And then all of a sudden, his skeletal remains appear. And they called that and an accident. where did it appear? Right next to the trailhead. It's next to water. <laughs> yeah, next to water. Yep, right, right along the creek bed. Yeah, accidental blunt force trauma to the left parietal. Yeah, the whole side of the skull was caved in. And yeah, uh, I showed... All, yeah, his, that was all inside the, the skull uh, uh, itself, the left parietal. Right. Yeah. And, and both you and our forensic anthropologist, John, and I, we're going to have John on here in the near future, uh, immediately. John Adams? No, no, no. This is, okay. we, we call him John. I'm sorry. We call him John. Yeah. That's not his real name. He prefers us not, you not okay. use his real name for his professional purposes. But um, he used to, he used to work the Bay Area courts here. So he's somebody that's very, very experienced in these kinds of things. And, and I told him, the, his immediate reaction when I sent him the picture of the skull said that was no accident, and that, which is exactly what they call it on the official uh, law enforcement appraisal of the situation. So somebody's not telling the truth in these cases. Well, well I... The foot, oh. the foot will disarticulate, uh, you know, from the, the main uh, bones there. So uh, it wouldn't be unusual unusual to find a foot still within a boot or a shoe or something if, like that if they're because, skeletal remains if something, yeah if uh but these aren't if, skeletal if, remains we're talking about oh it was still uh had meat and everything else right. uh cartilage and everything attached to it right, right. well i guess that, well i guess they didn't want to have a to history deal with taking the shoe off <laughs> well and will you and i've talked about the, the history of this with the dismembered feet go back not just decades, but they go back, I think, clear into the late 1700s. Right. They were finding this stuff. Well, here's a thought. I mean, you know, on, on the Campfire Talk or Q&A, whichever one we did recently, uh, the little air next week, we talked briefly about there was a story from Sports of Field Magazine. And, you know, long story short, uh, the Native American who was the chief of the group vanished. Uh, they found his... Uh, Long John's had been torn off his body, and that's all all that was left of him. He never he was gone, and they knew what took him. Um, I, I'm suspecting that if you got something out there that's you know eating everything up to humans, you know they're not just gonna neatly take shoes off. Uh, they're just gonna you know rip off whatever's there and, and discard it and eat the rest or take the rest. Yeah, that would stand to reason. Robert. I remember a couple of years ago, um, and this was down in the Big Thicket area, um, there was a news account of a lady that had gone missing, and they were looking for her, and they found her body uh, not far from her house. And um, the crazy thing about that whole situation was... It looked like somebody's whispering. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 
that's that's why I stopped. I thought that was kind of weird. Anyway, did everybody else um, hear that? I'm hearing it. Yeah, and I'm not moving. I hear it. I'm, yep. I'm, Where is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Blame me for it. It's cool. Is it? Is it on your end, Milo? Yes. Oh, for shame. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was okay. So, so anyway, they found the body, and and I actually had the video of the authorities uh, talking about this situation about finding the body and what was interesting and gross is it looked like from her upper jaw to her head was ripped off. And the only thing that was left was, well, that was, there was the body and her lower jaw and the head had been the head had been ripped off of her good lord joe that's in your and neck I, of the woods have you heard of that i i'm you know i heard of a, of a woman that was found dead uh they called it a bear attack but the one and this was like in 2016 so i don't know if it's the same attack or not um do you know when the but, time frame was chuck or it it was a couple of years ago i don't i don't remember exactly the year and I think I got the video somewhere of the authorities talking uh, about her. And the one I'm thinking of, they they ended up saying that it was a dog attack. But there, there ain't no dog out there that can rip a guy's head off or a woman's head off. I remember that one, Chuck. That was, you're right. <clears throat> it's like that that's the, the best story they could come up with. Yeah. Wait a minute. Was that the woman? The woman was actually in a in the yard somewhere. I I think uh, it was it was down the road just a ways from where her where she lived. I think. Okay. Right. Well, they also they also had another situation where, and it was in the uh, the uh, the big thicket area. It wasn't actually in the big thicket, but it was close to uh, uh, the proximity of it. Uh, in East Texas where a woman that was a nurse that was uh, coming to take care. She was a caretaker of an elderly lady and, ha and, and came in on uh, uh, specific times every day. And this woman was, woman was expecting her at eight o'clock and she kept uh, sh the car, this nurse's car was out there, but she never came into the house. Well, the woman, uh, the elderly lady couldn't go outside, but I guess she called somebody to have, somebody come check on this woman and they found this woman uh laying there uh she was partially i think consumed and and then mauled uh, right there by her her car and uh and that that was another thing they tried to blame on dogs yet they didn't have any dogs around to blame it on so uh, uh you know that was kind of bizarre yeah well there's uh, you know when i was when i went down to the big thicket on that expedition um there was all kinds of stories out there. And in fact, on one of the trail, of course, I think the authorities down there have, have said that there's a serial murder down there somewhere. Um, because they, they have a website called the, the missing Texas 40 or something like that. But you, it's, there's over 40 people that have, disappeared or found um that they weren't alive in that area uh down there and uh i heard all kinds of it, stories and accounts while i was there but you know uh, we watch on, i mean are there are there the similar are there similarities between the people they find in, in terms of how they were killed or or discovered i mean you know we watch those kind of shows and and it seems like with serial killers there's always a pattern they do things the same way over and over again mm-hmm Right. Well, well, I was going to just jump in and say, technically, they're correct. There is a serial killer. It just isn't what you think it is. It's just not, yeah. not human. <laughs> yeah, you see, the one I was thinking of, it, it actually happened in the same as the forest, so it may have been a different account than what Chuck was talking about. And the thing about that one is that they call it a bear attack. Um, usually, if someone is killed unprovoked, you know, by, you know, by another animal, uh, don't they usually go out and like search for this animal and hunt it down and kill it? They usually, yeah. Do, yeah. Usually. Yeah. yeah they, they didn't do that in this case, you know? 
So no. there's a black bear out there killing people. It's uh, it's still free to do so, I guess. Well, I don't even think we have black bears that big in Texas. I mean, we do get black bear, uh, but they they aren't they aren't big. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. They definitely aren't aren't killers. At least you know, like I said, unprovoked. You know, and um, if they did something like that, I think they would you know hunt it down and make sure they didn't do it again. Well, what's what's strange are different is that there's clusters of these. I mean, we, we have clusters of areas in here in Oklahoma where people have been missing and disappeared and never seen from again. Same thing and, in Oregon. And, yeah, I think there's those kind of kind of spots everywhere where there's there's something going on. And you and, know what's strange, Chuck, is you know, we put the word out looking for family members willing to talk to us privately about those kinds of things, and it's just been dead silence. Right. I, I've spoken with people who run websites, you know, for missing people. They're more than willing to talk and think that it would be great to help get those people, those families, some exposure, but not one single word from any families. And I, nope. I find that very strange. Well... Well, it's not strange if you had somebody come and t- talk to your family and tell you not to be talking about stuff like that. And that's what I, I was told goes that. on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like I it's like I told you guys before. Um, we got tribal complexes around here, and they've got all kinds of stories that date back hundreds of years, where women and children disappeared, and they never never found them. And um. And, and I've specifically been told by some of the some of those people that uh, it was Bigfoot that got those people. Joe, do you hear any of that sort of stuff in your uh, region? Um, you know, other than the, than than what I told you about, you know, the lady being killed. But it, I mean, they're definitely uh, are aggressive encounters, you know, and. and Big thicket definitely is, is, is full of them just as much as the Sam Houston is. Do, do you um, hear, do, is that area, um, is that known for a lot of missing people? Oh, yeah, like, like right where Chuck was talking about, the, the Texas 40, that's that, that's right there in, in the big thicket. And that's right where, like where Aaron had his encounter. Uh, you, remember you had Aaron on a while back. Yeah, it's, it's right there in the same area. And that's, uh, you know, that's all, like I said, that's all part of that same corridor. Um, and there's... So, Joe, correct me if I'm wrong. There, there's like three rivers that that kind of flow in that same area, isn't there? Right. Uh, yeah. And right where, like where Aaron had his encounter, there's a there's a big river right there, and it's very swampy over there. Also, that and that's what people don't realize that Texas got has got a lot of swampy area. Uh, well, guys, there was a- please don't forget about the the story that I told you about the young lady that was on the phone. Uh, and now that you just go right on up that that road there, um, and um, I, I can't tell you all the particulars because y'all know know why I know about that. But she was actually on phone with uh, uh, police, law enforcement, and um, and then her mother too, uh, telling telling she had left her car for God knows what reason ran out of the car and then uh, was in the woods and was actually describing these two things that were chasing her in the woods. And um, just recently they did find skeletal remains that were identified as her. You know, in a way that kind of goes along with, we haven't heard about it for a while or nobody's talked about it much lately, but, you know, I used to interview people who were paralleled in their vehicles by these creatures. Uh, I remember vividly, there was one guy probably 10 years ago or so uh, that talked about, and this was in the South. And I, I'm sorry if, you know, if that person's listening. I don't remember the state. I want to say it was either Alabama or Georgia. But they were on you know a, a country back road, and uh, one of these things was running right next to the pickup that they were driving, and, and they got away from the creature, but... We used to hear this pretty often, but I kind of think that's maybe a similar situation or it's connected where maybe the creature wasn't actually, didn't have the experience enough or wasn't bold enough to try to actually catch the vehicle and get the person. But maybe that's a a connected situation where they're kind of practicing up, you know, working up to that. 
Well, you actually hear in East Texas a lot of accounts, and I know Chuck and I have discussed this before, about uh, that they find cars where people have gotten out of the cars. The car may be still running. The doors are open. So why would you get out of the safety of your vehicle? I don't understand that. Well, you remember me talking recently about when we were in Oregon in July. Tom, you'll know this one. There was the, um, we saw the poster of the person there and i guess it, the gist of it was it was this guy was real solid person in the community wouldn't have just walked away or done anything like that but he was right next to his car on his driveway and vanished just vanished out of nowhere yep it was a really, how does that happen it was a really really unusual usual situation yeah i think wasn't the vehicle door open yeah, or the, something the county, he was just gone he was just gone and, and apparently that county uh, holds the record currently for the most people that are just boom, vanished. And it's it, there's no discrimination of who you are. I mean, we've had math professors from the University of Oregon that have just vanished. All walks of life, yeah. No sign of them. In fact, when we were there just a month later, I think, what was it, 13 people vanished in just the month of August? Yes, yeah. And those are the ones that are reported. The ones that are reported, right. Who knows if there's more... Well, you'd think that law enforcement would have a little concern out there. Well, you know, they did. What, they, they put out a PSA on it. What they what they always say though is, you know, we're understaffed, underfunded. You know, I mean, you hear that time and time and time again. That's the standard line, and maybe they are, but you know, I, I just don't know. I mean, it just doesn't feel right that there's not more effort put into some of those situations. Well, I think maybe they're afraid to go out there. Go ahead, Chuck. I'm sorry. Exactly what I. Yeah. That's exactly what I was going to say. It's a fear factor. It could be sure. Now you know Chuck from talking to you know folks that are native police that they they will not respond to those. And I've heard it from other friends on on different tribal situations. They won't respond to those calls. No, they won't. But they'll definitely talk about it. And and they because if, they know exactly if, what it is. Yeah. You know, there was a place up near, I think it was Caddo Mills area. Uh, the cops had told the people, if you go back in these woods, you're on your own, that they would not come back there to help you. Yep. They flat out told them that, you know, you go back there, you run into these creatures. That's, you know, you're on your own. You know? Was that regular police or was that uh, tribal police? Uh, this was regular police. It's, it was here in Texas. As a matter of fact, I think it was a guy that, that you had uh, put me in contact with. Okay. Four or five. Okay. So, yeah, he was the one who had that that big one on his property and he said it, uh, and when he saw it he was looking outside his kitchen window and he saw it standing up and he just said it kept standing up and standing up and standing up and then it came to his to his uh kitchen window and just looked at him like you know that i know that i can kill you at any time i wanted to he said that's exactly the look it gave him have you ever noticed talking all of us have talked you know to many witnesses over the years um that that's kind of the standard way that people talk about the way they are looked at by these things right yeah it's not friendly it's not just oh i'm just looking at you but they feel malice Forrest, you felt that didn't you oh yeah yeah and with everything that's been happening around here lately i'm beginning to feel a lot of malice <laughs> yeah i don't get it i don't get it uh you talk to so many people, well, and they'll forest. tell you that they're the forest, that they're the friendly forest people, and I'm like, dude, I just don't get it. When when people understand. out there who no, don't forest know this, had a unique situation. Oh, go ahead, Tom. I'm sorry. She, you had the unmitigated temerity not to open up that can of pork and beans for that <laughs> one, and he threw them at you. It's, oh, they, <laughs> it's because she didn't have any cornbread. Oh well, that's it. That's what it was. I forgot to make the cornbread. That's what it was. Yep, yep. Gotta have the cornbread. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, everyone, we're just about out of time. So, any any final thoughts, Joe, or anyone else? No, just you know, if you guys go out and you want to do this and look for Bigfoot, man. Just uh, just be careful and be smart about it, and uh, you know, don't go by yourself. And Joe, tell everyone about your podcast and where they can find it. Oh yeah, thanks a lot. Um, yeah, it's it's called Beyond the Woodline, and I cover a large array of topics from. Uh, Bigfoot to paranormal to UFOs and anything else that's strange and 
I run across some Bigfoot stuff. I like to send them to will, especially witnesses. That's what I like to do. And uh, so if you're into Bigfoot and uh, you want to talk about it, contact me. If you're a witness, contact Will. And uh, you can contact me at jrg.gillcountry at gmail.com. All right, Milo, Chuck, Forrest, anything, any final thoughts or comments? Um, just uh, to get with uh, Tom and and see if we can work together with all the question and answer and stuff. Cool. <laughs> that was good. Absolutely. Absolutely. But uh, I've good. been reading about missing hikers and stuff, and, and some of it just seems vague. That's I, no explanations. It's We found this, and they're dead because either negligence on their part or – but they – Half of these people, they say, are experienced, so I don't... Right. And folks, you know, if you know somebody, a family member who's had someone in their family disappear under odd circumstances, we'd love to talk to you privately, and it's not for this podcast or anything. It's just a, we'd like to have a private conversation with you. So you can reach us at either my personal email, wjebning at gmail.com, or Tom, you want to give out uh, your info? Yeah, uh, questions questions for all questions at creekdevil.com shoot them my way i have been catching up so i'm going through the backlog and love to hear from you and chuck how can they reach you uh you can reach me my email address is uh c a s c h l a b s at icloud.com and forrest do you want anyone to reach out to you uh, yeah, sure. I'll give them my uh, email address. It's uh, <clears throat> Texas Tardy, and that's T E X A S T A R D Y at gmail dot com, and that's all lowercase. All right, awesome. Well, listen, everyone, we appreciate you joining us today, and uh, that'll do it for this session. Thanks for listening to this episode of Creek Devil. If you or anyone you know has had an encounter with these creatures, please contact us at williamjevning at yahoo.com. That's william, J-E-V-N-I-N-G, at yahoo.com. All communication is confidential. Join us for another program next week. And until then, keep your eyes open out there.